Hi, I'm Will Towns, and the Vice President and Principal Analyst for Networking and Security at More Insights and Strategy. Joining me today is Mike Fitz. He's the Vice President of Solution Sales for T-Mobile for Business. Mike, welcome to uh, our conversation. Hey, thank you, Will. Great to be here. Well, we're going to talk about mobile edge computing, and I think to get started, let's define what the connected edge is and how it's intelligent from T-Mobile's perspective. Yeah, yeah. Hey, thank you, Will. And to define connected edge or um, sometimes what we call the connected intelligent edge, let's start with something uh, maybe more fundamental. I think let's first agree that the point of all this network and compute technology that we're going to discuss today is really to connect users to applications, right? I mean, at the end of the day, that's sort of what CIOs are doing, right? And so, um, you know, and by the way, I'm going to define users here pretty loosely. It's, you know, it's people, whether it's us, our customers, employees, it's machines, it's anything that consumes an application. So with that point in mind, let's bear that in mind throughout this, uh, let's sort of break down what is connected intelligent edge and let's look at it a word at a time because I think each word actually carries some important meaning here. And uh, and maybe we start with edge itself, you know? So, so what is the edge? You know, edge here is usually uh, a concept we think of as a network, you know, a network concept. But to me, the edge really defines the scope or the reach of these applications that we use. And that edge is ever expanding. You know, I was running applications probably like you will here on the edge of a network. In my case, the Sprint corporate network. I've been yeah. in the same office 28 years. So I was running applications on the edge 28 years ago. It just so happened the edge of the network back then was this Ethernet jack over here. Yeah. Right? Um, but the explosion of mobile devices and the pr proliferation of better connectivity now allows us to run applications in places, devices, et cetera, that just simply wasn't possible. You know, 28 years ago, we couldn't check our work email at home, and we certainly weren't running applications uh, on our phones. That's for sure, right? Yeah. Uh, so the edge is expanding. Uh, next, let's talk about connected in this phrase, right? We, I think we, you know, we know what connectivity means, um, but let's not lose sight of just how much improved connectivity has really pushed um, new applications to this broader edge I just described, right? Remember, mm -hmm. it was really just 10 years ago that the advent of 4G created a whole new set of applications like Uber and uh, Google Maps and lots of consumer apps like dating apps and uh, you name wow. it. And now yeah. today, you know, 5G is sort of doing it again. There's a whole nother uh, tranche of apps coming out, whether it's, uh, you know, and it's mostly, you know, highly reliable, low latency apps that are mm -hmm. enabled by 5G, like AR and VR and robotics and remote learning and remote surgery, things that, you know, didn't work on 4G, but are now coming to life with 5G. So I think yeah. we know those use cases. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, better connectivity enables more users to consume more applications on more devices in more places, right? That's sort yeah. of uh, sort of how we all think about it, right? And, you know, have we seen the extent of this connected edge yet? I don't know, but I always like to say, if a device can be powered, uh, it likely provides us even more val value if it can be a powered connected device. So I think it's, you know, reasonable to expect this connected edge continues to expand. And then lastly, intelligent. What, you know, what's the intelligent component of edge? Well, of this connected intelligent edge. Uh, you know, I would say, you know, building on this app application enablement theme, mm -hmm. you know, intelligent to me means putting more capable or more robust applications in the hands of us users. And in turn, more capable apps oftentimes means more compute. So intelligent here, I think, means putting more compute at the edge of the network and making it more reliable, more you know, faster, more efficient. Yeah. You know, as an aside, for those of us who have been around this industry a long time, right, historians of compute, uh, we sort of know the history, how it played out, right? It all started with mainframes back in the day where compute was ironically in the cloud, right? right. We accessed those applications with thin clients, uh, so thin, in fact, we actually called them dumb terminals. Will you probably remember that? Oh, I do. <laughs> and we moved to, you know, client server architectures, and then we lived through the PC explosion, all that moved, you know, cloud mainframes closer to us. And now, you know, more recently, modern cloud compute has sort of swung that pendulum back a bit. And so, you know, moving apps away from us. So to me, edge compute is really the heart of this intelligent compute or intelligent edge idea, because edge compute helps us sort of strike the right balance of high performance local compute mm -hmm. with the scale and efficiency of pure cloud compute. So 
you know, yeah. putting it all together, that's how I define and think of this connected intelligent edge. All right, Mike. So we were talking about connectivity and mobile edge computing being critical elements in this whole connected intelligent edge. Is one necessarily more important than the other? Um, not necessarily. Uh, you know, both are important, actually. And in fact, I would throw out this idea. Uh, you know, when it comes to high performance end user application consumption, connectivity and edge compute are really just two sides of the same coin. You know, think about it this way. If you had infinitely fast connectivity uh, to your data centers or cloud services, you know, there would actually never be a need for edge compute, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, likewise, if you had 100% of all content and applications being served by hyper local edge compute, uh, connectivity, frankly, wouldn't be that important. Now, you know, we don't have either of these extremes, of course. Um, that said, Good connectivity can actually go a long way to avoid the need for edge compute. And conversely, robust edge compute can make up for, you know, less than ideal connectivity in many situations. Um, you know, we at T-Mobile, by the way, and we take great pride in our connectedness of our network and uh, the short hops to content, the dense connectivity to cloud service providers, et cetera. And all this does help lessen the need for edge compute when you have good network. However, uh, you know, edge compute is always going to be necessary for certain applications, right? Because we have natural hardware limitations, practical network limitations. And unfortunately, uh, you know, good old physics just gets in the way sometimes, too, of my uh, infinitely fast network. Uh, you know, I always <laughs> think about this little anecdote, right? If, if we ran a fiber optic cable uh, with no repeaters halfway around the world, which, of course, we know, well, that doesn't exist yet. But if we did that and we put zero latency switches, routers and servers on both ends, just based on the speed of light alone, it would take our data 100 milli 130 milliseconds to travel halfway around the world and back. And uh, and that's just way too slow for many applications in our globally connected world. So uh, so both connectivity and edge compute will be around. It will be, you know, be critical to work together for a long time. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I I know you're partnered with AWS and I'm curious how you sort of define that collaboration. I mean, certainly Amazon Web Services, they're very focused on, on telecom. Um, they have a private 5G right. platform that they're taking to market. So we'd just love to get some color from you on how you're collaborating with AWS. Yeah, you know, the, the collaboration uh, between organizations like us and the hyperscalers and providers like AWS are, you know, simply a product of the ever increasing connected digital world, right? Um, yeah. And, you know, I would say when we think about this connected edge, let's, uh, let's think about connected in another way. You know, we have to be very, very connected to these partners of ours, like like AWS. And you know, we have to work together uh, as one team, frankly. We have sure. to, you know, connect our systems, our platforms, our SLAs, our support. You know, this, you know, a close partnership, you know, where we deeply understand the interaction of each other's services is just so critical to delivering a uh, success successful customer experience. And, you um, you know, in, in, in many ways, um, in these partnerships, yes, we have some shared responsibilities, but um, but we also have obviously very distinct responsibilities as well. You know, at, yeah. at T-Mobile, of course, our primary responsibility and our commitment to our customers is to provide a very reliable, fast and efficient network that's going to you know enable those apps for partners like AWS or, you know, any cloud service provider. You know, they bring the expertise in providing, you know, very scalable, reliable, efficient cloud services, uh, you know, including uh, edge compute capabilities that uh, we just talked about uh, a minute ago. You know, yeah. T-Mobile will never be <laughs> the cloud computer edge compute expert that, say, AWS is, right? right. And uh, But frankly, AWS will never be a connectivity expert like T-Mobile. So. You know, right. while our technology domain and responsibilities are somewhat distinct, you know, again, it is just an absolute must that we understand each other's capabilities, even exploit our synergies yeah. and, you know, ensure that these services work together seamlessly and efficiently to delight our customers. And frankly, when we do this, it's one less thing our joint customers have to worry about. Right. We're doing mm -hmm. this for them. We're making sure we interoperate. And that kind of partnership pro provides pretty you know, incredible value for our customers. Yeah, no, I agree. And, you know, what I like about T-Mobile's approach is that you're not just simply edifying your network to do that, like some of your competitors are. You're focused on very discrete use cases. A lot of that gets birthed out of your innovation centers. And I've had time 
um, with the team in Bellevue and other parts of the country to, to see this firsthand. And so I, I give you kudos there. But to sort of uh, continue on with this conversation around partnerships, um, I imagine ecosystems are a very important focus for T-Mobile. And I know I've spent time with the team. I understand your strategy with your advanced network solutions, how you're going vertical, and how you're building um, you know, blueprints with ecosystem partners around that. So I was wondering if you could spend some time sort of talking about that and T-Mobile's approach. Yeah, look, the, you know, the ecosystem is, is critical and partners are critical for us. Um, and, you know, the answer, the reason for that is, uh, is pretty simple, right? In, in today's very complex world, you know, no one solution provider can do it all. Yeah. Right? Um, the needs of our customers are also very diverse and rapidly evolving. The, this technology landscape that you and I love is so complex and broad. It, it takes a village sometimes to get things done. And so, yeah. you know, to bring value to our customers, we have to, you know, create more value. And, and I think we actually create more value with our customers through, you know, the way I think about it is breadth of partnerships versus mm -hmm. a siloed depth of capability. Um, you know, we like to do both and we like to be very capable and go deep in what we do. But I think the breadth of partnerships we can create is the key because, you know, as we progress further into this complex world of 5G and AI and IoT and everything else we do, we have to leverage, um, you know, our partner strengths and expertise. Doing yeah. so helps us innovate, deliver, you know, and so forth. And you know, look, I, I think about it this way sometimes, Will, you know, like just think of the most basic example. I just talked about this with my team the other day. Think about a very simple like application deployment, right? If you deploy an application, you're going to have a device involved, you know, maybe a mobile device sitting on a network, uh, some kind of security overlay, possibly edge compute, a cloud service, and then the application itself, right? Right there, just in that simple example, I just named six discrete capabilities that arguably uh, you know, come from six different providers, you know, certain, yeah. and so, you know, what creates more value for our customer? If we, you know, we try to string all that together ourselves, or instead do we, you know, build a partnership with six best in breed partners yeah. and ensure we have tight integration, you know, cohesive customer service, and then ultimately, you know, flawless execution. So, yeah. you know, even when one partner takes the lead, which is often the case, uh, you know, the partnership is just, uh, you know, so critical for us to succeed. Yeah, it's just it's leveraging, you know, core competencies and staying very focused on what you're good at. I mean, I, you know, I spent 30 years in corporate America before I became an analyst. And I, I've seen so many companies just, you know, stretch themselves too thin. And, you know, they're they're a mile wide and an inch deep. And at the end of the day, that that doesn't deliver real value for for business customers you yeah. know, from my perspective. But yeah. Well, as we close our conversation, you know, I really want to sort of talk about um, how, you know, the connected intelligent edge can really solve uh, business, real business issues and drive outcomes. But, you know, it's a it's a difficult journey for a lot of customers. Right. And sometimes it's tough to even figure out where to begin. So as we close our discussion, I'd love to get your input on, like, what advice would you give customers as they embark on this journey? Yeah, you know, it is. It's a. Uh... It's a crazy, fast, evolving world we live in, as I said a minute ago, right? And it's yeah. completely natural. I mean, sometimes you and I look at this space, right? And we're like, wow, you know, where's thing? Where's what's up? What's you know, what's next? And where right. what should we be leaning into? And I think our customers, you know, oftentimes say the same thing. And, you know, what's the what, where do I go first here? What's my next step? And, you know, my advice to customers, just based on my experience in working with them is is pretty straightforward. I would say first, you know, start with what you know. Your business requirements, your customer needs, uh, you know, your operational challenges. Start there, and then you know, clearly define and quantify. You know, what are those business outcomes you're looking for in addressing these challenges? And then third, and finally, and this is last for an important reason, you know, look for the technology solutions that deliver on those outcomes. Mm -hmm. and, and while this, you know, may sound very straightforward um, and, and maybe even obvious, I can't tell you that many times that we, you know, how many times we get inquiries where somebody says, hey, I need uh, some private network or I need yeah. computer, I need yeah. a wire replacement solution. Right. Um, we, you know, where the customer, you know, comes in saying they need a technology solution, but haven't really even determined what success, you know, looks like yet. Right. right. Um, yeah. A recent one is, you know. Customer wants to replace, you know, Wi-Fi at a manufacturing plant with a private 5G network um, to improve their, you know, 
productivity, presumably. And they say, great. You know, what benefit do you expect or or need right here? And can we measure those cost savings? With, you yeah. know, is it cost savings? Is it increased revenue or whatever value you're trying to create? Because otherwise, this becomes a somewhat time consuming network migration and a potential incremental spend. And if you yeah. don't understand the outcomes and can't quantify them, it, it becomes, you know, almost impossible to, uh, you know, to justify these projects. And so, sure, you know, I, I would just say, you know, you you, you know, to the last part of the question, maybe um, thinking about just one more aspect of this, you know, what, what comes first? You know, do you, um, you know, does technology drive use cases? Does use cases drive technology? Well, as I said, right. I mean, it, it's a little yeah. bit of a chicken and egg problem, but, you know, sure. you can gather from my answer that, uh, you know, I believe the business problem needs to come first and, and you, yeah. you know, solve it with technology. But, hey, you know, sometimes in business, technology innovation drives new business opportunities, right? I mean, right. Uh, what 4G <laughs> did for, you know, Uber, for example, but yeah, it's a great example. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So I don't know. So for me, the key, you know, is stay nimble to customers, keep an eye on, uh, you know, the technology that's uh, advancements that are happening, but focus on, you know, your unique use cases. And uh, because no, no partner, no vendor is going to understand your business like you do. Sure. Um, but I'll tell you what we can do. Uh, and what you should always do with your partners and vendors like T-Mobile, you know, leverage us to educate, educate you. You know, I, I tell you, I see best practices all the time in the industry, likely from customers, you know, peer set. Yeah. And uh, and I think we can be a great resource on what those best practices are in the kinds of business problems that are being solved and how, you know, technology like what we're offering uh, can help solve those business problems. Yeah, I know it's sage advice and, you know, 5G has been that shiny object that lots of folks have, you know, focused on, yeah. but it's, but, you know, I, I think you nailed it. It's about driving the right business outcome yeah. and, you know, and 5G can play a big role there, certainly. Yeah. But, yeah. but hey, Mike, thanks for the time. It's been a, a very enlightening conversation and I'm sure our uh, viewers have found it uh, is equally enlightening. All right. Thank you, Will, very much.